Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a cubic equation with complex numbers. And I'll be presenting probably two methods. Let's start with the first one. So for my first method I want to expand everything. z cubed minus 3z squared i plus 3z i squared minus i cubed plus i equals 0. Remember that i squared is equal to negative 1 and i cubed is equal to negative i, right? So this is going to give you a negative 1. So we get z cubed minus 3i z squared minus 3z and then i cubed is negative i. So negative i cubed is going to be positive i with another i it's going to be plus 2i equals 0. Now this equation is cubic. Do you think you can solve it? With the cubic formula maybe? Let's give it a try. So to solve this problem with a cubic formula, I need to get rid of this. And that can be done by changing the variable. For example, let's replace z with w plus i. And where you might be wondering, where does that come from? So here's what you do. You take this coefficient of z squared, divide by 3, and then negate it. Or in other words, you divide it by negative 3. Why by negative 3? Because of the degree. If you had a 4, then you would divide by negative 4. Make sense? Awesome. Let's go ahead and do it. Replace z with w plus i. I'm going to have to cube it. I'm going to have to square it. And then I need to multiply it. And so on and so forth. And of course, this is still equal to 0. Let's just use the formula one more time. w cubed plus 3w squared i plus 3wi squared plus i cubed minus 3i times w squared plus i squared plus 2wi. And then minus 3w minus 3i plus 2i. Let's go ahead and simplify everything, right? This is negative i. This is negative 1. So we get w cubed plus 3i w squared minus 3w minus i and if you go ahead and distribute this expression minus 3i w squared this is a negative 1 so it's going to be plus 3i and then minus 6i squared w and I can write it as plus 6w because i squared is negative 1 right you got that and then minus 3w minus 3i plus 2i. Now I can go ahead and clean it up a little bit. w cubed. And the whole idea is for the quadratic term to cancel out. That's what we did pretty much all of these for that. So here w cancels out as well, which is super duper nice. And then we get w cubed minus i plus 3i, which is 2i. Right? Actually, these two cancel out too. And then we end up with... 2i minus i, which is plus i, and that equals 0. This is awesome. You know why? We were supposed to, after doing this, we were supposed to replace w with something, but we don't even need it because now w cubed is equal to negative i. So hopefully from here we can easily find w and then go to z from w. Make sense? And what does that entail? Well, you have to think about the cube roots of negative i, right? And you can write this in polar form, e to the power pi i, or i times pi. But of course, you're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi to it, so we can write 2 pi n. And by using different values for n, we're going to be getting a different value for w. So, in other words, this can be written as 2 n plus 1 times pi i, so now w is equal to, if you raise both sides to the power 1 third, 10 plus 1 pi divided by 3. There you go. This is probably the easiest way to write it. And by the way, we should not forget the i there. Otherwise, it's going to be a real number. So these are the w values. But of course, n equals 0, 1, and 2. There's going to be three values. If you want wk or wn, you can say because there are n nth roots, right? In this case, um, there's going to be actually 3 because we're taking cube roots. 
Make sense? Okay. And we have the W0, W1, and W2 as the cube roots. If you replace n with 0, you're going to get W equals e to the power pi i over 3. That in indicates pi over 3, which is 60 degrees, and cosine of 60 degrees plus i sine of 60 degrees. Cosine 60 is the same as sine 30, which is 1 half. This is going to be 1 half plus root 3 over 2i. It's that simple, right? That's one of the cube roots. But you got to remember something. And of course, you can find the other cube roots too, same way. But this is just part of the equation. Z is equal to W plus I. So Z, if this is W, then Z is going to be W plus I, which is 1 half plus root 3 over 2i. And then I'm supposed to add i to it, and guess what that makes? 1 plus root 3 plus 2 over 2i. Obviously, there's a couple more ways, that, like more than one way to write it, but that's pretty much what that's going to look like. All right, great, so that was the first method. Kind of like expand and expand and use a little bit of substitution and get to a solution. I only did one, but the rest is yours. And the second method is as follows. We have z minus i to the third plus i equals zero. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't we just isolate this cube? Because it's just asking for that, right? Think about it. Without expanding, it would make much more sense to leave this alone like this. Make sense? And at this point, I can be thinking, okay, if z minus i to the third is negative i, z minus i must be one of the cube roots of negative i. But don't get into the cube root business. Here's what, what I want you to think about. Think about powers of i. i to the first is i. i to the second is negative one. We just talked about it, right? And i to the third is these two together will give me negative i. Awesome. Bingo. I got it. So this expression inside the parentheses can be i because i cubed is negative i. I'm not saying that's the only solution because there is more than one. Make sense? But at least we got one of the solutions, which actually we didn't find with the first method. Remember, that was your homework, right? So I'm kind of giving you a clue here. So z minus i can be i, and that means z is equal to 2i. If you plug in 2i, you're going to notice that it actually works. Now, there's obviously other ways to look at this problem. You could go with the polar at this point. You could cube root both sides, so on and so forth. And you could even factor this expression if you knew what the factored form looks like, right? Here we go. If you expand it, that's what you're going to get. If you factor it, this is what you are going to get. And obviously, being able to see that would be really, really, really hard. Maybe once you find that 2i is a solution from factor theorem, you could go with z minus 2i and do polynomial division. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.